let us begin students process costing <coughs> now what do you mean by process costing or when is process costing uh, used you remember students process costing is used when standardized continuous production is involved as against on the other side you have what is called job costing if you remember uh, what did it have it did not have something standardized it had something which is called uh, what should we say here customized instead of standardized can i say it is customized right we have customized uh, that means say you remember the bike repair students right it's a particular job or painting of a particular house so so these become individual jobs and those are in in such instances job costing is applicable but when when there is a standardized continuous production then it is said to be process costing we have we use the principles of process costing how do you do process costing cost of each process is determined right now now what whether you do job costing or process costing what is the what is the final intention i want to find out the cost per unit if i am making 1000 10000 5000 units of a product i want to know what is the cost of one unit if i am doing five jobs 10 jobs or 50 jobs i might want to know the job cost of each job yes or no <coughs> clear no now what is the cost per unit in case of a process the total cost of process the total cost you remember understand that in process costing so say for example you are refining oil so much so much gallons of oil are poured into the first process some processing takes place you get some output in this uh, output out of this process it may move on to the next process there is further filtering further processing and you might then get some out so there could be two three four five different processes or a single process or even a single process process is possible when you are following process costing so what is your cost per unit so if you pour so many gallons of oil as a result of it maybe finally you refine and you get petroleum you want to know the cost of a liter of petrol yes or no how do you arrive at that you take the total cost of all the processes involved divided by the total units of output whatever is the gallons of output that you have output petroleum you have and you arrive at the cost per unit right so process costing is used in which industries largely in the processing of milk refining of oil manufacture of petrol maybe sugar processing of sugar paint manufacture manufacture of textiles uh, chemicals juices etc 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 that's when process costing is used right okay just to just to understand in a pictorial form it's the same thing say raw material comes into this particular process maybe maybe we are making detergent we get some <coughs> some of the raw material required put it into this process and we have conversion cost what are conversion cost students the cost of Uh, cost of converting the raw material into finished product is called conversion cost so it does not include the raw material cost in includes maybe labor if you have direct expenses such other direct expenses and manufacturing overheads these together form what is called the conversion cost clear yeah. so the raw material is introduced you have other conversion costs all go to this particular process process right you introduce people work on it there is overhead cost and ultimately you get an output the output of this process is transferred to the second process the output of the first process is transferred to the second process input in the second process is the output from process 1 maybe i need some more raw material in the manufacture of my detergent there is other labor working here there are other overheads it's on a different machine there is depreciation power whatever there are some overheads here and therefore i get an output finally at the end of it maybe i am getting 10000 kg of detergent that is my my that is my finished goods so output of the second process has become my finished goods 
So process one, if you're making entries, accounting entries, it's it, it's like a work in process. In process one, there is in process two. And finally, from the work in process, it is tra transferred to what is called a finished good. What is called a finished good. So you have a process one account, a process two account, and from there it travels to finished goods. From finished goods are then sold. Finished goods are then sold. Clear students. So if I take <clears throat> and what do I want to know? If I want to know the cost, I will see what is the total cost of this process one, the cost of raw material and the conversion cost, cost of raw material, cost conversion cost, add up all the costs, divide it by the output. Is it 10,000 kgs of detergent? Great. Divide it and arrive at the, uh, at the cost per unit. Cost per unit. Yes or no? Clear students. See, I have taken a detergent example. Let's look at this. 800 kgs of detergent is produced after three distinct processes, the details of which are shown below. So, this is a total here, right? Under process one, you have $1,800 of direct material, 100 wages, and 300 direct expenses. Similarly, in process two, you have material and direct wages. Process three also, you have direct material, direct wages, and direct what else production overhead incurred is 800 and it is recovered on 200 percent of direct wages overhead recovery overhead absorption i hope you remember students yeah so what is the cost per kg now what do you mean 200 percent of direct wages that means this 800 right it's split into what will be the overheads here since the wages is 100 it will be 200, right? What it will be in this process? In this process, it would be 400, right? And when you come to the third process, this is 100. Therefore, 200% 200 of 100 would be 200. 200, 400, 600 plus 200, 800. So, this is how this 800 has been split. 200 here, 400 here, and 200 here, right? Now, what do we need to know? We need to know the cost per kg of detergent. So, we take the total cost here, this plus the overheads. This is the output, 800 kgs of detergent. And therefore, we check. Total costs are 2,300, 400, 500 and 800. Yes or no? This is direct material. This is direct material. Direct wages. This is direct expenses. And this is your production overheads. Totally, you get 4,000 divided by 800 kgs of output to arrive at, you are getting $5 per kg. $5 per kg. <coughs> Correct? Now, <coughs> the same thing, production overheads. You know what happens? How do we make? We find out what is the cost in process 1. Total cost of process 1 is 1,800, 100, 300 and overheads 200, right? You take process 2. This gets transferred here, transferred in cost, right? So you get 2,400, 400 and 200. And overheads is 400 here. Therefore, you get 3,400. 3,400 gets transferred. You have materials of 100, labor of 100 and direct expenses of 200. This is again, remember students, 200% of direct labor, direct wages. And total cost like you saw is 4,000. But we do ascertain the cost of each process. Process 1, process 2, process 3. Clear? <clears throat> now, if you were to make what is called an account, do you remember you have a debit and a credit? If suppose you were to make an account, a process 1 account, a process account, it looks like this. You debit the process account with all the expenses in process 1 to materials, wages, direct expenses and overheads. All the costs are here. Work in process is debited. And what happens at the end of the process, the entire output has been transferred to 2000. Mind you, here we are making the assumption that there is nothing left in between. Do you realize, students, that when you start making something or do something into uh, in process one, it's quite possible that when you stop the production process at the end of the day to close shop, yes or no, you might have something 
some things which are still half done here it is not entirely complete but here we are assuming everything gets over and the whole thing whatever is the output output maybe maybe in this particular cage what was our um, what was our uh, input the quantity if i take units if i take units um, maybe 800 no there was there was no uh, no units given as such maybe uh, 800 kgs were produced maybe i am saying 600 kg of raw material was introduced here this is how or uh, this is how this is how the entire uh, process account is prepared 600 kg of raw material worth 1800 these are your wages expenses and overheads the whole thing has then after process has been transferred to process 2 so now when you look at process 2 Maybe this was what did we say? We said 600 kgs. 600 kgs have come here. Maybe 600 kgs is transferred here. Maybe there is another 200 kgs being added here. It's possible, yes or no? The, 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 the information is not given. I was not given to me. I'm just making an assumption like this. And, and then there were wages and overheads. Totally, this was transferred to. From process 2, it's transferred not to process 2, it's transferred to process 3 transfer to process 3. When you come to transfer 3, you have 3400 transferred from process 2. Materials, wages, the maybe now I am talking of 800 kgs. Output is also 800 kgs. Mind you, it need not be like this. Yes or no students, in a process it is quite possible that there would be losses. It's possible that there would be losses. Two. Here, but we are assuming we have put in 600 plus 200 kgs of material and you are getting an output of 800 kgs. Just a simple thing for you to understand how process accounts are being prepared. prepared. We have not considered half finished goods. We have not considered half finished goods. We have not considered, uh, considered any kind of losses which can actually happen process all this we will discuss for now just get an understanding when we prepare a process account we just debit it with all the expenses and we credit it with whatever it is transferred out of so process 2 process 2 is credited <coughs> yeah with the amount of goods transferred and process 3 is debited with the same yes or no when there is a transfer of goods from 2 to 3 2 to 3 the receiving department is debited the giving department is credited so process 2 was credited process 3 is debited all other costs these are the costs of the process and then finally it's transferred to transfer to finished goods